Let there be light. Nightlights are a project that I think are really fun, but can also be really great if you're running a small business. They're really easy to personalize, they look really expensive, and they aren't that difficult to do once you know what you're doing. I'm gonna talk you through today some of the challenges that I had in doing this project so that you won't have them. If that sounds interesting to you, let's get started. Hi, I'm Katie and this is Things Katie Makes where we talk all things CO2 lasers. Today we're going to talk about creating this nightlight on my Thunder Laser Nova 24. It was great for this project because I was using quarter inch acrylic and I needed to do a ton of engraving and you'll see why in a second. If this is your first time watching this channel, I'd love for you to drop an I'm new down in the comments so I can welcome you into this community. All right, what are you going to need for this project? The first thing that you'll need is an LED base. You can get these a whole bunch of different places and they come with different features. The one that I'm gonna show you today comes from Johnson's Plastics Plus. That's really difficult for me to say. And it has no remote. It has just a touch sensor on the pad so that you can change the light colors. It also is USB, but also accepts batteries, which I really like. So if you aren't near a plug, you can still use this one, which I like as a feature. A lot of them come with remotes, so you can do timers and change all sorts of things with the night lights. I did find at JDS Industries, which I use for quite a bit of my supplies, they have a version that is specific to eighth inch acrylic and a quarter inch acrylic. And this might be very useful, and you'll see why when I show you this project a little bit later. The next thing that you'll need is your acrylic. I used quarter inch clear acrylic. You're gonna want clear acrylic because that in white engraving on that clear acrylic is what's gonna pick up those LED lights. So you'll need clear acrylic, and in this case, I used quarter inch. I love to get my acrylic from CMB Acrylic, which I've left a link for down below. The next thing that you're gonna need is a set of digital calipers. You're going to use this to measure the actual thickness of your acrylic and the actual thickness of your slot and also any other distances that you might need as you're preparing this project. The trickiest things in this project are making sure that you understand how deep the LED base is front to back and how wide your project can be to fit into that base. Other than that, this project isn't that complicated. It just looks really complicated when you're done with it, which is one of the reasons that I love it. Next things that you'll need are something to clean out the engraving with. I like to get inexpensive stiff brushes from the craft store, dry brushes, and just brush out that engraving. You could also use compressed air, but you really wanna make sure that you're not rubbing because then you could create scratches on your acrylic. In the case that you do get your acrylic a little bit dirty, you're gonna want some Novus plastic cleaner, which you can also get at CMB Acrylic. That is created for plastic, and so it's great to use when you're trying to clean off your plastics. You'll want to use a lint-free cloth. You can use coffee filters for that, which is interesting. They have no lint, um, so you might want to have coffee filters on hand as part of your cleaning supplies. And then the last thing you might want is some Gorilla Tape. I like to use my plastic razor most of the time to remove masking, but in this case, Gorilla Tape is probably the better choice. So again, you don't scratch that acrylic, especially in this project where when you light it up, you're going to see anything that's scratched. So you're gonna wanna try to keep this acrylic as clean and clear as possible. So what are the steps to create this project? The, when I first started, I placed a small piece of wood into the slot and measured the depth of the slot just took a little pencil, scratched that off and measured that. The first thing that you have to understand is how deep is that slot? So I went about this in maybe not the simplest way. I had seen the idea to engrave off part of the material to make it fit nice and tight. And I thought that was a great idea. So I created just a little testing piece of material and I started probably bigger than I needed to, about two inches wide, two inches tall, and I really didn't need that much material to test this. So I got better over time and shrunk down the little rectangle that was I was using. Then I created a box in light burn that was that size for my engraving. And I knew I was gonna need to make multiple passes, but I didn't know how many. So at first I started with four and that got me nowhere. Next I moved up to eight, I was getting a little bit closer, 12 got me really close and 16 was too far. So once I had completed that test, I landed at about 14 passes of engraving to get my piece to fit properly into the base. 
That really was the most complex part of this project was figuring out what that was going to take. The setup of that was pretty easy. It was just the patience to get it right. Once I knew that, I needed to determine how wide the project could be from side to side. There are little bumps, kind of ridges in this LED base that I had to account for. So I made sure to measure with my calipers how far apart that was and make sure that my base would fit within that. The next thing I wanted to know was how large should my design be? And I wanted a pretty big design, so I ended up with a design that's about five inches wide and about seven and a half inches tall. And I really like the results of that. After that, I needed to figure out how will this design look best when it's lit up? And what are those things that make it really shine bright? And what I found in looking at some other examples was there are kind of two ways you can tackle this. One is to have a really intricate design that has a lot of engraving all over, but has a lot of loose spaces within it. So thinner lines, but more of them. Or to have some thicker banded lines that can really catch the light. So in this case, I chose to do more of those thick lines and a thick font, a thick couple of fonts. And I created this design in Lightburn in about 20 minutes. So pretty simple to get this from start to finish. The longest parts were really testing that base and then actually running the job. It took about an hour because of needing to engrave that bottom part for 14 passes. But other than that, that's really the project. It's really simple to do and has great results that you could easily add to your business. Let me take you over to Lightburn and show you the steps that I use to create this specific project so you can understand how you make those separate portions of this project. So here we are in Lightburn. I brought in a simple SVG of a light bulb that I want to use in this project. So what I need to do now is I need to get this onto the correct layer for this to be an engraving file rather than a cut file. So I am moving this to the layer that I liked for this. Oh, first I need to ungroup it so that I can look at every piece individually. Next, I need to cut a small piece out of one of the parts that I want to engrave. So I'm gonna highlight those two pieces in different colors so that I can see them, grab them both, and then use the Boolean selection of two shapes. So uh, I'm gonna subtract one from the other, the Boolean subtract function, so that I have that updated shape that will then engrave. So all of that light purple will engrave. And I'm gonna use in that my standard engraving settings which for this are 450 speed and 20 power. And I'm gonna go through and do that on each one of these pieces of this light bulb. So you'll see me repeat that process for each one of these pieces. And I wanna make sure that I have a large enough area to engrave so that this will light up quite a bit. I want that part since it's near the base of this engraving to really capture those LED lights. That's why I'm doing this in such a thick engraving area. Next, I need to create the outline portion for the edge of the light bulb. To do this, I'm going to use the offset function. So I need to go in and grab that piece and I need to work with the inner parts of that to make the shape. So I know that I wanna create this offset for this whole piece to make the cutout. So I'm going to go ahead and create the offset around the entire light bulb, which will show where we're going to cut so that then I can put the engraving portion of the outside of the light bulb within my cut section. So I'm going to choose my offset distance of about two millimeters, and I want it to use the outer shapes only. I don't want to delete my original objects. Uh, I think that I chose five millimeters because I wanted something a little bit thicker. And then I want this to just go outward, which is why I'm selecting that in this portion. Now that I've created that offset, I'm going to make that a cut shape. So you can see now I have the outer layer of the entire light bulb ready to be cut. Next, I can go in and create the engraving portion of the larger part of the light bulb. So as I started to play with the offset, I realized that the two little uh, 
other highlight pieces that I wanted for the light were going to be in the way, so I needed to move those first. So I went ahead and did that before creating the offset for the engraving portion. Now I can go back and create the offset on that outer portion. And I want this to be pretty thick, again, because I want it to really capture the light from those LED lights. So I want this again at that five millimeters and I want it to go both directions. And in this case, I actually do want to get rid of those shapes, but I wanted to see the result first. And I'm going to group this with that portion that I have already created. So I'm going to use the unite function with this bottom portion and the top portion so that I don't have a funky engraving overlap there. So you can see that portion is now uh, created. Now I can see that I have lines that I don't need anymore. I wanna go ahead and make these the engraving colors that I need as well. And I hid the other pieces just so that I could see that and delete that one piece that I didn't need anymore. So now I have my engraving portions all set up. The next thing that I need to do is create the portion that is going to have the 14 passes for the base. So if you remember, we created that rectangle that was 16.1 millimeters high. That's in that 14 passes of engraving to get rid of the thickness. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and create that 16.1 millimeters high. And then I'm going to create it at about 50, at about 65 millimeters long because that's what fits into my base. Then I'm going to set this down and I'm going to duplicate it because I know that I need that shape for the engraving, but I also know that I need that for the cut. So I'm going to use this one for an engraving and then I'm going to make a copy that I will unite with the red line for the cut shape. So now that I've placed that, I can go and grab both that red line and my shape, grab that rectangle right there, grab my red line, and then I can unite those. And now it's all in that first layer as a cut. Then I wanna place this rectangle inside of that cut line. Now, one thing that I do want to note is that I actually want this to be slightly larger than that cut line, because if I don't, it's not gonna fit into the base. I had that problem where I ended up with a, funny little piece of acrylic that couldn't fit. So you want to make sure that you're cutting inside of that portion that you've already engraved, otherwise it won't fit. So I'm moving this minutely using the X and Y positions on the axis just to get it over those cut lines. Once I have that in the position that I want it, now I can add my wording. So I wanna add, let your light shine. And I found a couple of great fonts that I liked for this project. I have a lot of fonts installed on my machine. So I like to use wordmark.it to help me see what things might look like with the phrase that I'm working with. So I have that first cursive phrase and then I created the shine in this baby mermaid font. And so I'm gonna make it a little bit larger and make sure that it fits where I want it to. And then the last piece that I'm going to do is once I have that size where I, and positioned where I want it, I'm going to reflect the entire image and engrave this on the back side so that you have that smooth side in the front instead of this engraved side. So I mirrored this and I'm gonna place it with on the back side of that acrylic just so that it lights up nice and pretty. That's it, that's the result. What do you think? Pretty easy, something you wanna try out? I definitely wanna try more of those intricate designs. Let me know whether you like the thicker line designs or those thinner line designs. I'm curious to see what I end up liking more. And now that I know what I need to do for this base, I will definitely use it as some additional tests and I'll share the results back with you. If you're looking for a supportive community that can help answer some of your real-time questions, come join us over in Laser Maker School on Facebook. We are really growing that community and working to share tips and tricks that might help other laser owners get up to speed faster and to really continue to grow in their laser journey and in their businesses. If you like this video, I would love it if you would give it a like and subscribe so that you don't miss any other content. My favorite thing to do is test things that might intimidate me a little bit, especially if it's something that someone doesn't necessarily want to go through all the material themselves. I'd love to do that for you and make the mess myself.